are listening to the IELTS podcast. Learn from tutors and ex-examiners who are masters of IELTS preparation. Your host, Ben Worthington. Hello there, IELTS students. In this tutorial, we are talking to Parambir, and he's going to be telling us about his amazing IELTS results and his amazing IELTS experience. Uh, so how are you doing today, Parambir? I'm very good, and uh, I'm so happy to hear you. Since I have already uh, only listened to you on the videos, on the tutorials, but uh, uh -huh. this is my first time to be with you. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. So you've been completing the course, and who is correcting your essays, Parambir? Uh, Ellen was my teacher. She was correcting me in right. uh, my writings, and uh, I think it was Daphne who took my speaking course. Beautiful. Okay. All right. Well, good. It seems like the whole team were involved then in your <laughs> success, which is super. Uh, so before we jump into it, could you tell us um, where you're from and why you are taking the IELTS exam, please? I'm from India. Uh, to be very specific, uh, I come from Punjab state. And uh, I have taken IELTS just to be able to to immigrate to a different country, an English speaking country. Mm -hmm. uh, it is Canada for me. So mm -hmm. they required uh, 8777 as their requirement mm -hmm. in IELTS. This is why I took IELTS. Right. And why did you choose Canada? Uh, it is more convenient and uh, we can settle there in less time than in other countries. For example, Australia takes uh, around two years just to be very clarified that uh, what are the requirements and we met to those criteria. Mm, I see. And did you look, consider the UK? Did you consider my homeland? Uh, actually, no. This is oh. because <laughs> <laughs> <Just joking. laughs> they don't provide uh, enough opportunities to the immigrants to stay there for a longer period. Uh, okay. My plan was to go and uh, not worry about uh, every other things like uh, applying again and again for work permits like that. Mm. Mm, I so see. that kind of facility is not available in the UK, I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you were looking for like the, the most straightforward process to get settled down and the least bureaucratic and Canada seemed to win out on that. Is that right? Correct. It is the reason. Yes. Very interesting. And what is your line of work? I'm a legal professional. I have worked as a lawyer for three years almost now as well as i was uh, pursuing some uh, international laws as well but uh, i think in a, in a developed country i would have more opportunities to uh, showcase my skills with what I, what I have learned so far interesting interesting um i've always considered um, the legal profession country specific so if somebody becomes a lawyer in I don't know um, the India or the UK I always couldn't I always thought that if they move to another country they're going to have but well, they will have different laws and how does that work can you practice law in Canada eventually I guess Yes, uh, it is possible. Obviously, the laws are somewhat different in other countries. For example, uh, in my country, India, and uh, in the UK, we have different laws on some mi minor purposes, mm -hmm. like uh, for internet services, for IT laws like that. But there are s similarities, unless it is a completely different country uh, where the laws are very rigid and mm. not very flexible. For example, laws in India and in the US, they don't meet, they don't match much. But mm. uh, if we consider the UK and the Canada, there is much similarity. So uh. eventually we have to get a license, first of all, if we want to be a practitioner there. Uh, okay. It's a long process, but it is yeah. possible. Yeah. Very interesting. Very interesting. I, I would have thought that it, it 
it would be common law countries where the transfer is easiest, which is what you said, but it, it's like common law but within the Commonwealth where the transfer is the easiest. Is that right? Yes, correct. Right. You put it very correctly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's always fascinated me, the differences between common law and coded law. So I guess if you wanted to go to a country that practiced coded or codified, I think it's called, it would be a different story altogether. Is that right? Yeah, correct. Interesting. Okay. Anyway, back to the IELTS podcast. The legal podcast has finished. And <laughs> let's just, <laughs> so let's jump into it. So could you tell us uh, what problems um, you were looking to solve uh, with regards to uh, taking IELTS, uh, to joining our IELTS course? What problem did you need to solve? Actually, I didn't think that I had any problem um, in my language. I always thought that my language was okay to good to go. And nobody up uh, till Alan corrected me on anything. Mm. Uh, this is why I had some confidence that my English was good. But it was not the case when I appeared for IELTS again and again. I took three, three attempts before I contacted this uh, IELTS podcast. Right. I was not successful and was stuck at 6.5 score. And was not sure what to do next. I was uh, disheartened, actually, mm. that uh, I, this is not a fair test, I thought. <laughs> then I did some feed on, uh, uh, on the YouTube that what to do next. There are ample material to go through, but I was not interested at, at all. Mm. So specifically, I wanted to score higher in writing. Mm. Uh, I seem to have uh, some... I thought, I don't know what they demand, the examiner's demand. Mm. And this is where um, IELTS podcast has helped me. Right. Um, so you were stuck at 6.5 and you, well, before the IELTS test, you were rather confident in your English and you were basically unaware of some of the uh, challenges and also unaware of what the IELTS test was actually requesting from you. Right? Yes. Interesting. And then once you um, started getting feedback, um, you, you were improving. But before we get to that, Ellen was helping you with your essays. Uh, but before Ellen, what other solutions did you try? I know you briefly mentioned it before. Could you just uh, mention it again? What issues, uh, what other options or solutions did you look at before? Actually, it was my brother who suggested and another another website. They were costing much. Uh, I was not ready to pay for whole courses because that was not my requirement at all. I was okay with uh, other modules. Only the writing module was I was lacking. This is why I want to focus just on writing, uh, first of all. This is why I started uh, surfing at the internet that what to do with the writing. Then I come across one of your video where you correct on the YouTube that uh, how does a nine band score essay look like? You have uh, described everything that how uh, collocations work and how we can um, have that kind of material in our writing and score higher. This is how I came to know about IELTS podcast. And when I um, visited the website, it was dry. It was not too much uh, marketing, uh, which I was seeking. Uh, that was my preference. So with less marketing and only the correction part that you were offering, that kind of uh, interested me, got me interested. This is how I thought uh, it would be a good idea Okay. To just, yes. Okay. Yeah. I don't know if I'm pleased or upset that you called my website dry, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> dry, not in the sense that uh, uh, it is actually dry, but it is, it is not giving me uh, very loud uh, expressions. For example, other websites would use um, bright colors and... Uh, they are kind of bombarding a, a, with marketing facilities that this is our student, this is our student. 
But okay. you didn't do any of that. Gotcha, gotcha. We, we you gave to... me just in simple words what we are offering and how it will help. And gotcha. that actually, you stood by your statement. Okay, thank you. I yeah, loved I... about that. <laughs> yeah, I'm just joking. I was most attracted by your website design, <laughs> even though it was not the one which we, which uh, aspirants might be looking, but uh, it inter- it got me interested. Gotcha. Okay. It, it did its job. It did its job. I'm just joking. Yes. But I'm weird. Yeah, I know what you mean. We're not as aggressive um, as other sites and it, it can come across um, uh, rather dry. But yeah, I'm, I'm only joking with you. I'm, <laughs> the, the worst site it did. I'll start joking now. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, proceed. Yeah, yeah, let's proceed. Uh, so we finished the legal podcast. We finished the design podcast. Now we're starting the IELTS <laughs> podcast. <laughs> so um, let's see. Um, could you tell us what specific um, like moment you decided, uh, you realized that working with Ellen was helping you? Actually, I before I purchased the whole package, I gave out my single correction just for $5. I thought uh, it was worth it. Mm -hmm. Uh, What is there to uh, send $5 or give away $5? Mm -hmm. But when when she corrected me and spent almost uh, 20 to 30 minutes just on single correction, uh, Mm -hmm. it got me an idea that uh, they are really interested for my result, not because uh, they want to earn money. They want themselves to be known to the people this is how i came got interested and when i received the correction she told me how i was wrong at many different dimensions uh, this is how i thought that uh, the, these are the persons who will who can guide me and uh, correct me Excellent. Okay. That's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, just for the listeners, we are offering a $5 essay correction just as a special offer. And you can get that when you sign up or when you go to our site. Um, and yeah, when you go to our dry site, you will see that there. <laughs> just <kidding. laughs> Uh, just joking but when you go there yeah and you can get a a sample and basically as Paranbi said uh, five dollars is rather inexpensive and the idea more than anything is just to see if we are a good fit for working (laughs) with each other and and it totally worked for Paranbi he started getting his feedback he started getting his um it, it, you discovered his errors. Do you remember off the top of your head what Ellen uh, shared with you in, in your first correction? Or, or from any of the corrections, what was your biggest takeaway? Uh, when I was writing, she pointed out, I was uh, too much loaded with the content. Mm-hmm. I had so much to write. As well, I has uh, I had different kind of vocabulary to be used in that writing. It was not relevant at all, but uh, I did not know until she pointed out. She told me everything that uh, how I was not attempting the task as uh, as it was demanding. I was uh, irrelevantly uh, writing, uh, which I was thinking was appropriate, but it was not. So she told me in simple words that uh, how I was so wrong. This is because you, I was writing not to impress somebody, but just to express that uh, what is, if I can uh, describe the matter in simple English. And uh, this was a, this was a uh, very big change which came in my writing. Earlier, I was writing to show up, to show off that I know this much, I know this this also. But uh, after she corrected me and gave me a suitable advice, um, it got me a very different kind of, uh, um, what we say, uh, amusement that I was wrong at all. I was not writing correctly as per the demand. This is how I got interested that to know how I can improve more and more. And she kept on uh, giving me her pieces of advice, what mm. to do and what not to do. Interesting. I so think just, this was the story. 
Interesting. So just to summarize, you were writing to show off your knowledge, uh, to show your sort of like your use of the language. Um, yeah. is basically the language became the focus rather than the actual communication. Would that be an accurate description, a fair description? Correct. Interesting. So what Ellen did was kind of um, guide you towards writing um, with for communication and to write for clarity rather than to impress the examiner. Um, it, it, would that be fair? Yes, it is absolutely clear what you are saying. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. Um, just for the listeners, I see this day in, day out. Um, and I will see essays full of lovely, flowery phrases. And really, we have to remember, I say this a million times, I've said this a million times, that the IELTS exam is more about, uh, it's a language exam. What is language? Language is communication, and it's not the quality of your ideas. It's the quality of that you communicate them. So it's often, I, I say this all the time, but I'll say to a student that, look, go for simple ideas that are easy to communicate rather than complex, uh, flowery, elaborate, eloquent, beautiful ideas that could solve world peace, but will be an absolute nightmare to communicate on the IELTS uh, exam, especially in exam conditions. So um, Parambir, um, just to backtrack, you said you'd taken the exam a, a couple of times. How many times do you um, ha had you taken it before the, uh, before your final scores? I took uh, two exams before I, I contacted you. And uh, then after I had this exam on 19th January, I was not sure that uh, what would be my score, but I thought uh, because I... I had to go to a restroom break in the reading time. I did not want to mess my writing, so I took it in the reading time. I was quite uh, sure that I might not be getting a seven band score in uh, writing this time, or in re reading module. But uh, I was qu quite confident in uh, writing. Mm. But uh, unfortunately, I got 6.5 again, and I was not sure why. Uh, I contacted uh, your website and they were prompt to offer me another free package to uh, keep myself correcting on essays. Mm -hmm. And uh, I filled up my another exam right after that. I took the next date which was available. Mm. And this time I, I applied for the computer-based exam, not the paper one. Mm. I thought uh, this was a change for me. I was quite afraid to shift to the computer-based exam, uh, as was I was not uh, very good at uh, typing speed. Mm -hmm. But I had to push push for it because the paper-based exam was uh, dates away. I want to be quick. Uh, she offered me to correct and uh, send your essays as fast as you can as I could. I sent a uh, single day two essays and she gave me the corrected version in uh, six to seven hours. That was wow. quite impressive by her side. Yes. Yeah, she definitely. Was. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Another, so, yes. Another uh, point where I was lacking, she said that uh, I was not too quick at writing. She told me that uh, I, I asked her that I was writing more than five, 400 words for task two. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I asked her if I can make it l shorter. She said it was fully 12 essay and uh, I did not have to uh, cut it short. So what I need was to improve my speed. So uh, in that uh, one week, I just worked on my speed. I wrote three essays on single day, for right. one with... One with uh, one listening and reading, and then as the exam says, as the exam pattern, and after that writing. Then after I would take uh, a 15 minutes break and then attempt two essays, two back-to-back -back essays, task two, task one, and uh, these kind of four essays actually in total. 
So that okay. helped me to improve my speed. Very interesting. So let me just um, backtrack a little bit. So um, you you got 6.5 um, and then you you got back in contact with us and we offered you more corrections to carry on working for more corrections and to carry on working with us until you got that seven. And then yes. with Ellen, you got some corrections back very quickly to help you uh, keep moving forward. And also in this time, you, would, you did um, like a full, well, Ellen recognized through the email communication, email support, she recognized that the essay length wasn't a problem. It was 400 words, but it was the amount of time that you said that you were taking. So to solve this problem, what you did is you did an entire IELTS exam test um, in the order of the exam. But then after that exam, you took a 15-minute break and did some more essay writing. Is that right? Correct. Absolutely. Beautiful. Wow. Wow, that is hardcore. And how, how often did you do this? Were you doing it every day for a week or longer or less? Yes, every day, every day. Wow, how many Since days? I was, uh, six to seven days, six days, I, uh, to be precise. I don't that, know, on the seventh day, I had my exam. Wow, so you, wow, that is complete IELTS immersion. That is fantastic. Well done there, apparently. And it obviously worked. And also, just one last thing, although you were writing four or five essays every single day. You also did the IELTS on computer. Did you find it faster or slower on the computer? I think it was faster mm. uh, because earlier, I think uh, I had that uh, anxiety that I may not be able to uh, write, that, write my essays quickly. In paper-based, what we can have the advantage is if we are running out of short of time, we can write very quickly. Mm. Uh, as we have already in the exam board, we can write uh, whatever we think it is appropriate. But this is not possible if we are typing. We have to be very precise what should we uh, write and what not. Uh, so this is how I needed to have two to three minutes spare um, that uh, I completed my essays in time because it, it is not the option. It was not the option in the computer-based exams that I could write while holding my examiner to stay and let me write. <laughs> so this is how I had to work more, but I think it was worth it. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, fantastic. And what scores did you get in the end for each section? Oh, actually, no, before we get to your final scores, tell us what happened with the speaking. You got some coaching on your speaking as well. Yes, I uh, definitely corrected my speakings. Mm. Firstly, uh, it was a free free speaking. One speaking was free with the package. Mm -hmm. uh, I sent my recording to her. Mm -hmm. She corrected me and gave me the apt advices that how I was uh, swaying away with my ideas and not being on the point what she what was asked. But uh, when, she, when she told me to add more adjectives, I thought that uh, why risk it? Let's join her too so that she can guide me further. In the, then she kept on telling me that what kind of language should be used while speaking to, mm -hmm. how I, can, I could communicate uh, my language or my ideas using complex sentences, for example, the conditional ones. Mm -hmm. Then she told me to be a very sophisticated person while speaking, for example, using the, uh, uh, using the approximation while communicating the ideas and discarding the absolute statements, which we do um, when we talk to anybody, actually. Mm -hmm. so very she, interesting. Sorry, carry on. I interrupted you. She told me all that uh, in the first in the first exam, which I took uh, on on nineteenth December last year, which was paper based exam. I got eight points, uh, eight band score in speakings. I was not expecting that at all. Uh -oh. uh, apart from <laughs> yes, <laughs> but uh, this time I was uh, more in the frame of writing mode. I was 
I want to sure be sure that uh, I did not do not miss seven scores in the in the writing. Mm. This is how I uh, let my speaking go. I think I did not practice as much as I was doing for the first time. Ah, I see. Yeah, this often happens. Uh, this often happens. But I mean, although you did, uh, as you said let your sleep uh, speaking go it did seem worthwhile because what you needed at the time was your um, the, writing the writing exactly exactly yeah wow but 8.8 did you say 8.5 in the speaking no no 8.0 8.0 8. sorry gotcha yes. gotcha but that's still really good that is fantastic and <laughs> what specific uh, what results did you get on your latest test i'm really interested to hear yes that. latest uh, in my listening score i got 8.5 wow and in my readings i got uh, full marks 9.0 wow and in my list writing and speaking i got seven band score seven each Wow, those are fantastic scores, Paranvi. Well done. That is amazing. Fantastic. That is all thanks to you. <laughs> I told it to Alan too. I did not have had that confidence that I could make it, but uh, it is her who didn't lose heart on me. It is a bit emotional to share this kind of uh, emotions on the podcast, but mm -hmm. I, I think she really helped me a lot. Yeah. Oh, that is amazing. I'm going to definitely tell her. So that's fantastic. Yeah, I am. I'm so happy for you. I'm so happy. And yeah, it was thanks to Ellen, um, my dry website, thanks. and Daphne big, who helped you with the speaking. Big thanks to you also. <laughs> yes, yes. Big thanks to <laughs> because because without you, this uh, communication is uh, not worthwhile. Uh -huh. Everything that you, you work on the back background, all the yeah. modules that you provide us, uh, that uh, particularly the written template which you have provided in your package, mm. uh, I I don't think it has any flaw. Thank you I, so much. Yes. Uh, yeah. It, it, I, is, it it covers all the risk which can be there uh, for the IELTS examiner. You have covered all of it. Thank you very much. I can I, I could I can say this now because I have uh, if not hundred I got uh, from fifty at least uh, websites and tutorials who have shared that lastly that uh, you must add uh, development of your essay which is proceeding from the ideas which you have described in the body paragraphs. Uh, you have uh, suggested us to write. It is predicted that by phrasing that, and uh, we, we have to add information on based on that mm. what we are writing. So that was uh, really amazing. Uh huh. Thank you. Thank you very much, Paranvir. And yes, it's um, yeah, yeah. I'd say it's the whole team here as well, and there's the the um, uh, operations girl as well. She's also a star. She's pulling it all together, and yeah, and this is yeah. What we just enjoy doing is getting results. And, and just helping students progress and get the success that you deserve. But all the work as well, apparently, you put in cannot go and should not go amiss uh, because you put in a hell of a lot of work there. And I'm, I'm very proud of you as well. So uh, that, those are amazing results. And we're, we're all happy that you're going to be going to Canada and practicing law there. So before we finish, do you have anything else that you would like to um, share for the listeners who might be struggling at 6.5 at the moment? Uh, for them, I have uh, the only single piece of advice, not to lose heart and find the right people to have you guided. Mm. This is the key thing that they can look for. Other than that, I don't think it is the hard work which which is keeping them that people everyone does who is aspiring to score higher they will be working hard but uh, the lackness is we don't get the right advice for right advice, uh, feedback which is where you you people fall in mm -hmm. i thank god that you are there 
it is over the uh, it is a bit emotional but i think uh, this is the right description which i have for you people all, all the team yeah thank you so much yeah i i totally agree with you there uh, the feedback is invaluable and we can only give feedback as well if we've got hard working determined ambitious success oriented students like yourself as well so it really is like a symbiosis so really we need two two components hard work from you and we can guide you there so that is um yes. a great point you've mentioned